What is up guys, my name is John Dawson and I am currently building a 1300 square foot off grid house and I'm doing it completely solo. I would love for you guys to follow along. We are doing an entire series on this build. So if you want to watch it, please hit the subscribe button, like the video and without any more wasted time, let's dive into the build. What is up guys we are diving back into the off-grid build retold i guess it's called and we are diving into pouring the concrete piers um i was gonna start the video by showing you how i installed the sauna tubes but i cannot find the film for that specific task so we'll just jump in with the concrete um, but as you can see we already started pouring this concrete my biggest issue was the fact that um I actually didn't secure my sauna tubes enough. Uh, they were okay, we got away with it, but if I were you guys, I would do a tall A-frame support system for any sauna tube that's above, I would say two feet off the ground or out of the ground. Um, otherwise, when that gets filled up with that concrete, it will have the ability to, to lean out of plumb. So some people ask me why I poured my sauna tubes up out of the ground versus just leaving them flush with the ground or a couple inches above the ground. Um, my main reason was to create a distance uh, between the ground and the dirt and the wood, uh, the wood joists and the wood beams. Um, so I decided to pour my concrete to grade, lay my beams on top of that. That way I don't have um, any wood closer than around I think it's 16 inches is the closest wood to the ground um, so it just it just protects you from termite damage uh, protects you from rot anything type of moisture just kind of keep, keeps all the framing members off the ground a little bit you can pour which I did with the addition um, and you'll see that later I did pour um, I think it was a 24 by 24 square pad that I dug into the ground and then I put six by sixes coming up from that um, that's another way to do it, but overall, that's really the only reason I decided to pour concrete to grade, um, is just to get it up off the ground and, um, not, not have lumber close to the dirt. All right, guys, uh, that was a little bit of a nightmare or actually a lot of bit of a nightmare, but we got them all poured. Some of them got knocked around a little bit, so I got to get them in quick, uh, uh, flatten them off and then take the laser level around again and double check. First time doing this, uh, went about according to plan, which was a mess, um, but they're all full except for one, which I gotta use that extra concrete that he dumped over there to fill that one up because he mixed it too runny. Um, he was mixing it really runny, so it was pouring out the sides, and then he would mix it too dry, and then he'd mix it too runny, so it was kind of a back and forth, but regardless, we got it all here, and now I need to finish it so I can't stick around. So um, what I'm doing is I'm driving these rebar in. The reason I'm setting them after is because one, I didn't have enough time to set them before, and also this way I don't have to use any wire to keep them separated. I can drive them straight down into the concrete, grind them off, trying to drive them a little bit deeper and then finish the top and we'll be Gucci. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So the reason I am setting my rebar after, like I just said, is so I didn't have to like brace them in, inside the, the sauna tube. Um, this is 6,000 PSI concrete, so um, it's it's pretty solid. But uh, overall, this, this is gonna work fine. I cut them long enough to where um, they go down pretty much all the way to the bottom of the, um, the sauna tube, uh, to the bottom of the hole. Um, I'm setting, I'm doing, I'm doing three rebar in each and I'm doing them at a kind of a triangle. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to have a, um, a lag bolt that's going to drill into the concrete in order to hold my brackets, which is going to hold my beams. So I wanted to make sure that these rebar aren't going to be in the way of me drilling that hole. Um, so that's why I'm doing kind of like that, that dice one, two, three style, um, situation thing there. So yeah, it's fun. Uh, right out the gate, uh, you can see I added an additional brace to this one cause it started to lean over a little bit. Um, that was not done before. If I was smart, I would have done a little collar brace around the top of my sauna tube and then done like a little teepee situation or even an A-frame situation just to hold it from going, you know, back and forth. But regardless, you know, it got done. I, uh, if I could do it again, I would definitely do spend a lot more time with the bracing of these lower sauna tubes, which are about three feet out of the ground. 
Um, here, I this is I think one of the last ones I did, so it kind of dried up a little bit. So what I did is I poked a hole in the top of a water bottle, just to create pretty much just a little spray can out of it. Um, and this way I can kind of just wet the top of the concrete, which gives me the ability to kind of finish it just a little bit better. So if you ever run into that on, on a pier, um, you just grab one of your water bottles and it'll give you a nice finish. So what I'm doing here is I'm, uh, I let it dry for a bit, about an hour, I think. And now I'm just going around with a shovel and clearing off some of the over pour, the, the, the spillover from the piers, um, just so that it doesn't form around the base of my, um, foundation I'm doing this because when I do the vapor barrier later I don't want to have a bunch of jagged edges around the base of my my piers so I'm just clearing that that concrete out so that I can rake it away later and we'll get a nice clear line around the bottom of those sauna tubes so that we can get a nice tape job when we do the vapor barrier um, down the road so as I was working on the concrete and cleaning it up and get everything ready uh, our Lowe's delivery showed up with our lumber package um, yes, I did some of my lumber package from Lowe's. Unfortunately, the entire bunk of two by fours ended up getting taken back because they were absolute garbage. Um, I will say the reason I went with Lowe's is because I get way better customer service at my local Lowe's than I do at my local lumber yard. I don't know why that is, but my local lumber yards treat me like absolute trash. So I don't really go there for my I don't go there if, unless I have to um, that's kind of just the way it's been so I've been trying to use them a little bit more but overall Lowe's takes care of me they give me deliveries they give it to me on time uh, they work with me over the phone and um, it's just I don't know I, I wish local lumber yards kind of took a little bit more pride in their customer service because um, if so I'd be buying my lumber packages from them And then now I'm going back and I'm checking level. So I have my sight laser or my rotary laser. And what I'm doing is, is I'm looking for that solid beep on top of my piers. What is up guys? So what we did today was get the foundation poured, which was a complete crap shoot, but it's all good. We got them all done. They're all level. Um, they're all sitting exactly where we want them to be. Um, they're not the prettiest looking things ever, um, but they got the rebar in them. Um, they're to the right height and uh we're, we're doing we're doing good right not everything can be absolutely perfect and go according to plan i'm learning hopefully maybe some of you guys are learning um if i were to do this again i would do this differently um i would probably support them on the top portion of them as well as the bottom so that if the truck were to bump it um like you did with a couple of them they wouldn't just swivel out of out of plumb um or out of level um they would have a little more backbone to them but overall as you guys can see here we got uh, the lumber delivered. We got all the piers set, all the piers poured. Um, I cracked all the concrete around the base of the uh, the piers, which was spilled over from uh, just being crappy at pouring concrete, um, so that I can still get the forms out. If there is any shimming to do, we'll do it with steel plates. Um, we'll have a couple different dimensions of steel, uh, thickness of steel plates that we'll use to level out everything. I personally don't think we're gonna need any, but we're gonna have some just in case because I know I'm not perfect and something always comes up. Um, once we're done with that, we're going to start framing this thing up. So the next couple episodes, we're actually going to be getting into framing. I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm going to be talking about why we're doing some of these things and a bunch more exciting stuff. So I hope you guys stick around. I appreciate you for watching and, and, and going along with us on this. Um, so much love to you guys. Subscribe if you want to, if you want to see more. We're always learning. We're always getting better. I appreciate y'all. Have a good one.